Thanks for joining me on my 2022 archery elk hunt. I love telling hunting stories and sharing the ups and downs, essentially the hunting journey. This elk hunt was challenging for a couple reasons. First, when Oregon went to controlled units or draw units, I did not have enough points to hunt where I wanted to. So I was stuck hunting a small piece of private land, which I was very grateful for, but it required a different approach. I had to go in quiet, limit my time in the area so that I didn't scare or blow animals out. The property though had a lot of great habitat. Wet meadows, aspen, juniper sage, um, dark timber pockets. So that had lots of positive things going for it. Second, the weather was very hot, often reaching 100 degrees on multiple days. I hunt solo except for a couple days when I was joined by a couple of my friends, which was actually really wonderful. This video picks up on day nine, and I hope you'll stay to the end when all the hard work, sweat, and patience pays off. Oh man, I hiked up over the, the mountain, down the valley, went to pick up my bike, and I've never fixed a flat tire before. So I drove to town, I got some, I got some slime, tire fixer stuffer. We'll see. Otherwise it's gonna be a lot of hiking for me. At least it's holding air for a little while. We'll have to see in the morning it's holding air. Yay, my first bike tire that I've ever fixed. My bike tire fix did not work, but it's does not look like it's the it's, uh, September 13th, just other than that one bolt. Um, heading out early this morning um, just because the weather's changing, and I don't know, feels better. Got a slight little uh, sprinkle rain, it's raining this morning, which is great change the weather a little bit maybe it'll start these bulls firing up so heading out early feels good the weather change could be positive coyote i thought that was a bull i was like it's on it's on <laughs> what a day i went hunting with a friend of mine all day and i called for him the first time like somebody has ever asked me to call for them and we made like this really long hunt. I mean, it was only four miles, but it was like up, down, up, down. Really good country. Never crossed a fresh track. Never saw any sign. So I couldn't put my good calling skills to work, but I was really honored that he wanted me to call for him today. So I did that. Now I'm sneaking up this canyon where I've seen this big bull. He's been hiding out. I call him the introvert bull. He's a big bull. He's all by himself. Or at least last time I saw him he was all by himself. So He's just not interested in the ladies. It's September 14th. I've heard one, bu one bugle. It's been slow to say the least. <laughs> Looks like I have a bear. <laughs> That's very fresh poop. Must have followed me out the other night, or, well, yeah, he could have followed me out the other night. I'm staying in this little cabin down at the bottom of this drainage, and um, I had to run to town to get some supplies to try to fix my bike tire, which I'm super bummed about. And uh, I came back and I barbecued chicken, and whew, I think I might have, smells good. Yogi Meg came to investigate last night. His, his pile of poop is huge, but his, his tracks are small. I don't think he's a huge bear. I have a bear tag. I turned this elk hunt into a bear hunt. Hmm. That sounds like a good idea.
<laughs> well, this elk season has been painfully slow. I have seen with my own eyes two bulls, and I blew one out. I made kind of a rookie move and pushed him too hard. And then the other bull, we just ran into each other. He was a nice bull. He's the one I call the introvert bull. And then um, I called for a friend of mine. We went down into this deep, dark, nasty hole. And we had this bull that was just bugling, just firing off, firing off. And every time we get closer, he'd, I'd bugle and he'd bugle. And I'm like a deep, raspy bull. It sounded like a nice bull. And we work in and get close. And he'd walk off. He'd bugle and walk off. So I call him my walk off uh, bull. He's all mouth and no balls. <laughs> <laughs> he did not want to play. This is Anne. This is my uh, my hunting partner this year. She doesn't go out hunting with me, but I'm staying in this small little cabin in eastern Oregon. So I'm not out, you know, spike camping and backpack camping like I normally do. But staying in this cabin, it's abs I'm so spoiled this year. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, and she stays in the cabin while I go out hunting, and then I come back and have fun. But this this hunting season has been so slow that I've tried to I've decided to hunt other things, right? So I'm learning how to hunt for arrowheads. And um, I found this one. Look at that. Look at that. That's I think that might be like a spearhead. I don't know. It's a weird rock. I'm not sure what kind of rock it is. It's not obsidian, but it's definitely like not shale, the kind of rock we have around here. And then I found the obsidian. You're like your more obsidian kind with the, the top. The tip is pointed up, is broken, and the knock is broken. But they're beautiful, right? So <laughs> there's no elk to hunt. I'm hunting for arrowheads, and I'm hunting for fossils. And check this out. I found my first fossil. This is this little rock I found, right? See that little fossil? I'll give you a close-up of them, but... Look at that, he's right there. Zhut. So, I mean, no elk, but we're having a blast. I found a, a handful of arrowheads and um, I'm learning how to fossil hunt. I spent the next three days hiking and hiking, covering miles and miles without seeing or hearing a bull. Oh, hey, hello. It's so slow and hot. I'm on to my second book. <laughs> Honestly, it got to be a little discouraging until things started to happen. Okay, game face. Midday madness, here we come. I'm gonna drop down. Let's see what we can do. There's nothing to hunt. You can't hunt them if they're not here, so I'll find out here real soon. And then I'll be sad face. <laughs> Oh my gosh, so close. First time I've gone full draw in 15 days of hunting. Oh, you know, I didn't make any mistakes. I didn't wear out with everything was fine. I got done hunting and went to the top of the ridge. I was just gonna call down to this draw just to see if anything responds because I hadn't even cut a track, right? I mean, okay, I, I maybe cut a cow track and maybe a bull track, 
not related and I'm like a mile apart. Oh, so I go to this ridge and I just call down, you know, and off to the left I hear some sticks break. And I'm like, this one must have been a deer. I mean, it was very slight, right? It's like, I'm gonna go check it out. So I go over there and I check it out and I go, sure enough, those are two elk tracks, right? And they ran straight downhill. And so I'm like, hmm, what the heck, right? So I go down, follow them for about 15 yards, get on my cow call, and I, I hit that cow call like three times, and all of a sudden two branch bulls came rocking out of the, uh, the uh, oh gosh, the, uh, the bush. I can't remember, Mount Mahogany, the mahogany. They came walking out of the mahogany. Oh my god, just get an arrow knock to get it going. And then I went to draw and my um the buckle on my release hit the buckle on my backpack and it made like a little plastic on plastic noise and that freaking bull stopped right behind a tree. His head was out looking towards me, his body and his vitals were covered by a tree, and I was holding, 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 holy sh cruds balls. I must have held that position for, I don't know, it seemed like forever, but pretty soon the shake started on my hold arm, you know, and all. So, and the other bull was about like back in the mahogany's and he, he had no idea what was going on, right? But the lead bull heard that weird noise. So I let down and the lead bull, oh, he kind of like, oh, this isn't good at all, you know? And the uh, bull behind was like well I'm kind of still interested he took two more steps and I now I have to draw again as soon as I draw again he saw me he was busted and they both took off but not really not really far right so I was like I booked it uphill I got my onyx maps out and I looked at the topography and I was like oh I'm gonna go up over this hill back down this draw and cut them off and start cow calling again and I did but what I cut their they'd already passed me I cut their tracks and they weren't running they were walking but then the wind changed because it's like 4.30 and now the wind started blowing downhill. And I was like, eh, I'm going to leave those two little branch bowls right there and try to find them in the morning. <sighs> this is what happens. you got to just keep hunting. I mean, there's no sign. I'm like walking around this thing like there's no animals here. Like I might see a deer track here and there and like maybe a cow, maybe a bull. But I can't, sometimes maybe it's just a calf, a cow, like a beef calf because there's cows here gotta just keep hunting. You gotta just keep hunting. Ah! The next morning, September 18th, the weather changed significantly. There was moisture in the air, clouds, low fog, and it was much cooler. Coming off the heels of seeing those two bulls, coupled with the weather change, there seemed to be an energy in the air. Because the fog or low clouds blanketed the low ground, I stayed at the highest elevation I could, glassing and listening for elk. And then, it happened. It all happened so quickly, I knew I would not get the shot on camera, but I came much closer than I thought I would. On this day, I was joined by a good friend, which made this hunting experience all that much better. It happened quickly. There was no magical calling scenario. Instead, as I was hiking, I caught the strong smell of elk. I looked around and two bulls were walking straight towards me. I quickly knocked an arrow and drew. My friend made a soft cow call, which stopped the lead bull, a crazy looking spike. However, he did not stop in a spot where I could shoot, forcing me to hold my draw for well over two minutes. Once the bull took two steps, I let the arrow fly. By that time, he was quartering to me pretty strongly, and my arrow caught one lung and liver. He walked 30 yards, laid down, and the hunt was over. Perfect. Another great thing about hunting with friends is the help processing and packing out. Okay.
agony.